Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be drilling some winter wheat, but we have a little bit of a special guest. A McCormack X7 680. Yes, I know it's not a green John Deere tractor, but we've got this from our local McCormack dealer, which is about a mile away as the crow flies. It's our closest dealer and we're gonna see how it goes. Let's check it now, out. Now, I probably should say, just as a little bit of a disclaimer, this isn't a brand new tractor. It's not a brand new demo. It's actually a five-year-old tractor. I've driven one that is newer than this and it has a few extra bits on now. As standard, they've kind of updated them. But this will give you a good idea if you're looking at a McCormack, what you actually are gonna get. The dog seems to love it. She likes the carpet. Before we even think about drilling, however, what we have to do is make sure that the fan is blowing the air out of these pipes and then down behind those shoes there. Because essentially, if we're getting air behind those shoes, it means that the pipes aren't blocked up and the seed's coming out. If we're not getting air, we need to find the problem and then fix it. I've checked all the coulters and they're all running fine, so that's great, we can crack on. Barley's come and sat on my lap. Um, drill box is all set up, we're all calibrated, we're ready to go. This field, however, is gonna be a fair test for this drill because this is a uh, two-year grass lay that's been silaged and it's been run on a lot, so it's gonna be fairly hard. Um, but this tractor's got 185 horsepower, boosts to 195 on a three meter Claydon drill. It should be fine, but I'll keep you updated and see how we go. I probably should add that not only is this a second year grass lay and it's pretty hard, but we have added some muck along the top that was spread yesterday, so that's losing us a bit of traction. And I have got the tines on the drilling at a fair depth just to try and alleviate any of the compaction that's been created by the grass. So it probably doesn't get a much tougher job uh, for a tractor than what this is having to do right now. But I will say, she's pulling it at a fair lick. We're just going up a tram line, uh, seven and a half kilometers an hour, and she's not really trying at all. Um, she's singing along nicely, and she's making a hell of a job on that side as well. So yeah, really impressed by how it's pulling. I probably should go through some of the in-cab features. There's a lot of stuff on this, so bear with me. As usual, we've got a normal steering column, lights and horn and indicators. We've got main lights down there, there for the front lights. And then up at the top here, we've got all the work lights and flashing lights and bits and pieces. Bluetooth radio, we have climate control up here, which is really good. Quite impressed with that. I am also impressed with my cool box down there. That's quite cool. This has a carpet in it as well. Cat engineering, I think, put most mostly put carpets in their machines. Um, I thought it was a bit of a novelty at first, but actually it's quite good. You can pressure wash this carpet to keep it clean. Obviously you can you can uh, hoover it or whatever. I'd have it in in the summer um, when you're bailing and things like that. You take your boots off when it's hot. In the winter though, when it's around the yard, I think I'd leave it out and put it in the workshop. On this side, we have the DSM screen, everything on the armrest as well, apart from just the speed controllers for your PTO shaft. I've got my drill box there, but ignore that. The dog loves the carpet. She's all found herself a nice little spot. DSM screen's great. Normally when you're running it, you're just running it on this and you've got like your kilometers and your revs, the hitch position. You can have uh, GPS on here as well if you're just using the Egnos signal. If you are gonna use more than Egnos, you have to have a separate screen. I think the McCormick's work on Topcon, which is pretty good. And you can have different screens set up on this side if you want to. Um, you can go into here and set everything from like your hitch control to you can have a camera, you can have like your own personal settings, PTO settings, auxiliary settings, ch change the transmission. And you, the other thing is quite cool is you can have like your own drivers. So you can set up, if you like it one way and someone else likes it a different way, you just have your own driver and you select it from the menu and it'll put all your settings back on, which I think is quite a nice feature. Also got like headland management control on there so you can set a sequence and use your joystick to work that when you're doing things like drilling and, and so on and so forth and you're up and down and in and out at the end you want to turn different bits and pieces off so yeah quite impressed with the screen and what you can do on that um the joystick i quite like we used to have john deere's and our john deere's you got bits and pieces everywhere and you kind of keep having to move your hand around but on here it is dead nice when you're drilling everything you want is uh is here to touch really gears at the top this does you can get a vario um machine this one isn't i think that's on the, the model less than this though but this one's a normal geared machine 
So your gears are there. Your first spool is also on here, which is quite a nice touch. You've got your up and down for your uh, hitch at the back, headle and management controls, and your revs button there. So I've got it set so it bumps my revs when I press that button, you can see, and lowers it. You can have this little button here and you can program it. It's called the My button. You can program it to do different things, diff lock, four wheel drive, automatic power shift, or I've got it on as a D clutch. There's loads of buttons on here as well, which are good. It, you know, again, diff lock, automatic power shift, auto PTO, um, your four wheel drive, and there's some safety features too. That button there, you hold it down if you can get out of the seat and it makes sure that all the buttons on the back will work, that's pretty cool. This, you have to hold it down when you first turn it on to make sure that all the spools work so you can't turn it on and do something a bit silly or by accident. Electric spools on here as well, which is good. And a separate joystick to work the front weight. I don't know if you can see the front weight if I you see it there on the joystick up and down. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's, you can have PTO, this doesn't have a front of PTO, it has got the bits on it for it. Um, but yeah, you can opt to have front PTO on it as well. Quite an impressive machine really. Yeah, it's been good. Another top feature of the McCormack is a decent cup holder. John Deere still haven't worked out how to make a decent cup holder. That is a marvellous piece of equipment. John Deere, take note, cup holder. Now there are a couple of things that this machine doesn't have because it's an older one that the new ones do have. The new ones have another button down here on the armrest which is a hold on brake function which is pretty, that's pretty good. Uh, essentially you enable that and then when you're driving it on the road you just drive it like an automatic car, you don't need to use the clutch, you just hold it on the brake when you get to a junction. Um, and you can use it in the field as well, so you can use it when you're bailing, if you're round bailing or whatever, I think that'd be a really good feature to have. Like I say, this one doesn't have it. Um, this does have auto steer on it as well though, I didn't mention that. So this is all ready, done up for auto steer. Just have to put the dome on the roof and you can use it and the auto steer button is on the armrest too. And also the rever, that's good there. Oh yeah, and under the armrest we've got some controls for the hitch and your power controls, power to eco control for your transmission too. Another little feature that I quite like on this tractor is if you press the button on the armrest to make sure that um, you've told it you're getting out of the seat, you can enable these buttons on the back, which you normally have an up and down button for the arms anyway, but this one does your first spool. So it's good when you're folding markers up because I've got hydraulic markers on this drill, both sides obviously, and if you have one up, the other one's usually down. But I can actually put one up, clip it in, and then press the button, Follow this one up too. Also, it has up and down linkage arm buttons on the front. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. Here we are on this side. So you can enable the front linkage to go up and down. So if you're trying to put something on the front that's a little bit, you know, finickety, then you can use the buttons. Pretty good, really. So what's my verdict on the McCormick X7? Well, to be honest, I think McCormick have really pulled themselves together with this one. Um, it's a machine that I've really enjoyed using and it is up there with some of the best makes. Um, and it's a proper, proper market competitor. Things I liked, I liked, it was super comfortable on the road. The Carrera front axle with the um, independent front suspension is wicked. A lot of grease nipples, but honestly, so smooth, a lot smoother than my John Deere. Um, I really just like the machine in general. Everything kind of was where you wanted it to be when you were like, oh, where's the lights? You're like, oh, all that up here. And you turn and that's where they'd be. You know, everything was in the right place. Um, it was very, very user friendly and generally quite comfortable machine to sit in all day. I'm not a tractor driver, but I did quite enjoy sitting in there. Things I didn't like, the headland management system was a little bit difficult to get your head around to start off with, but once you worked it out, it was fine and the cab seemed just a little bit plasticky, but I think that was down to the color. Um, I'm used to driving a John Deere and they tend to make everything like browns and oranges and, and it's very nice to sit in, although it is still plastic. Whereas the McCormick was obviously a gray, which you kind of get in your New Hollands and things like that. And yeah, it just looks more plasticky, even though it, it isn't any more plasticky than any other tractor. Um, but saying that, the buttons weren't rubberized, which some people will think is not a nice thing, but my rubberized buttons on my John Deere wore out in 2000 hours. So actually I don't think that these McCormick buttons will wear out. So that's kind of a good thing. 
Another thing to consider is probably your dealers. Now, my McCormick dealer is about a mile away and they are brilliant. They are proper, the guys in the workshop are great mechanics. Colin Catley at Catley Engineering, who's the dealer, he is a great guy. Um, and yeah, the, generally you can take things there and you know it's gonna get sorted and they're really good to you as a farmer as well. They really appreciate your business. So that's something um, that I don't tend to get with other manufacturers and yeah, something definitely to keep in mind. They really do seem to appreciate your custom. So the big question, would I buy one? Honestly, I'd seriously consider it, yeah. Um, the premium ones come in a gorgeous cherry red. It's like a metallic dark red and it is, whew, it looks the biz. Um, and with the dealer and everything else, yeah, definitely 100% consider it. Um, great machine and when you consider the price difference between the McCormick and the John Deere you can see where some of that money is spent but unless you're using the Green Star and you're doing yield mapping and God knows what else and you're absolutely going to town I don't think that the John Deere is worth the money I really don't not comparatively no one's paying you extra money for your corn because you're driving a green tractor um, so yeah 100% consider a McCormick just give one a go I think you'd be pleasantly surprised Right guys, that's it for another video. If you could like and subscribe, that would be really appreciated. And I will see you next time. I'm gonna go and start doing some maintenance around the yard because cows will soon be fully in and we need to get this place ship shape. See you then.